Wonderful to see you. I trust you were successful. Boom, baby! Boom, baby, indeed. Welcome, ladies and gents, into yet another Amphibia analysis. I'm keeping my end of the bargain and finishing up the season two finale, season three teaser. And what we were presented with was quite thrilling. And if anything, not only does it increase the hype for part three, but boy, does it open the door to so much potential. This is the next big thing. And it's time to dive back into the world of M... Wait, I, I guess it's more of the human world now, huh? Yeah, so let's dive into the world of planet Earth potentially being invaded by the forces of Amphibia. Roll the intro. Straight from the very beginning is of the planters being transported into Earth after the events of the season two finale, which is something you better have already seen if you don't want spoilers. And of course, given by the way it was portrayed, it's without a doubt a correlation to the original introduction. Within this time, no longer being transported alone, but instead with the frog family trio that's helped her since the very start as well. I can only imagine what their reactions are gonna be when dwelling on Earth because the number of technological advances that they're going to be surrounded by versus what they're accustomed to will be mind blowing. Blowing. And same can be said for the animals and other creatures on Earth as opposed to what you witness in Amphibia. On Earth, we have birds instead of giant dragonflies, dogs as pets as opposed to spiders, and foods beyond the planter's imagination. Something we see Hapadea seemingly impressed with as he's holding Anne's phone. We finally have a face reveal of Anne's father, as well as what her mother looks like as of today, since her previous reveal was during one of Anne's flashbacks. I'm very curious to see how her parents will at first react to allowing the planters to stay indoors with them. They probably won't take it with a a grain of salt as their first impression, much like how Anne reacted, but I'm sure that they'll come to terms once they realize how much of a great help they were in allowing Anne and their very own home. We also get to see Anne's actual cat she had referred to in season one, which is something that clearly looks to be such a likable cat. And now here are the most significant clips of the teaser they gave us for season three, which is of Anne finally wearing two shoes and having leaves out of her hair. But seriously, it's of Anne with Polly and Sprig escaping from one of what seems to be Andreas' robots. While others could also be of Andreas' militaristic robot army, as were also shown giant dragonflies scavenging the earth. But what I found peculiar during the scene was the different change of location. I don't believe this is in California, but possibly New York's Chinatown or somewhere in China itself, merely showing that this is an invasion worldwide or giving us a hint of their true origin. Which brings me back to a short theory of what's to come with the head of Frobo, as they could be searching for answers as to whether or not Andreas's strange technology may have developed a bit on Earth. I do believe that's why we have multiple clips of Anne and the gang running and hiding from the cops, news reporters potentially, and others in order for them to find answers of the unknown and not just cause mayhem for no reason whatsoever. I mean at this rate it would kind of be out of character for Anne to do something like this unless it was for good reason. It's either that or the government wants to experiment with the planters. Heck, as for the robots for all we know, the robot uprising that we're witnessing from these clips may not even be due to Andreas teleporting to Earth, but instead a result from him activating his robots and then being implanted somewhere around on Earth as well, not just Amphibia. We also received these two beautiful shots from the world of Amphibia and on Earth. The first one with Sasha, Grime, and the people of Wartwood seemingly preparing for the battle against most likely Andreas and whoever stands with him. One of them I bet will be Bog and some extremely loyal acquaintances of his, given how King Andreas literally blew up one of the towers during his rampage. So maybe the toads aren't exactly going to be on his side for too long. And once again, seeing Sasha finally be on the right side and looking as if she knows her true purpose while still in Amphibia is truly uplifting. The second is of some other characters from Earth that I'm certain will become great assets to the team in search of the mysteries behind Amphibia and potential correlations of the world and planet Earth. The person in front may be of a woman that works at a museum, possibly the same one we see Hapadaya and the rest sneak past inside of. And given by her UFO earring, it's possible that she'll be one of the very few that believe in Anne and her conspiracies, as I'm sure most will refer to them as. On the right side are of Anne's parents, the left side shows her other friends more than likely. The person with the light blue hair could be another person willing to help Anne in her scientific search for evidence in Amphibia's historic past. The ones in the very background are for sure going to either be news media outlets or, my personal favorite, secret agents tracking down Anne and the planters every move in order to stop them from finding out the truth about Amphibia and its origins. And last but certainly not least is of who I would like to call the human duplicate of Hapadaya Planter. <laughs> ah, look at the top of his head. The hair, the body shape, the attire he wears, 
it's all too similar. But what can we possibly determine from this? Could it be that Amphibia truly is something that was somewhat always a product of an experiment or something related? But most of all, could this be Dr. P for all we know? The Dr. P that we saw in the front page of the book that Marcy was holding within the season two finale. Well, I guess we're gonna have to wait until we see the human Hoppadiah in season three, because next up is of Andreas and Marcy back in Amphibia. With the king wielding his lightsaber-like sword as Marcy is shown breathing thankfully, and more than likely being treated for her severe womb. And by using even more Dragon Ball Z logic, this could be the healing pod of Amphibia, where Andrus' old army used to heal after any battle. As for why Andrus is doing this, no, it's more than likely not because of his sudden change of heart, but to instead use Marcy's intelligence for figuring out more mysteries behind Amphibia, and or just flat out using her for other projects he may have in mind. Now, the last clip is of Anne while still in the same attire she was wearing during the finale, so this may be a tease of what's to happen during the season three premiere. Or the studio behind it just really wanted Anne to be seen in the same awesome tree branch glowing effect she was in in the previous time she turned Super Saiyan Blue. The teaser basically ends right there with some concept art being shown in the background behind Anne as she's in the middle of a highway road. And judging by all of this, I once again can't stress enough that only some of these clips will more than likely make it into the final cut of the introduction. However, the majority of these clips are probably the episodes of season three itself given by the animation. I wouldn't exactly describe it as undone, but simply not as polished as the original just yet. And the same can be said about the background behind Anne during the end. This clearly is not the official season three poster art as it even uses certain imagery from the past. Well, what do you all think about the video? But not only my magnificent video, but about the potential of Amphibia. There is a ton to unpack in this upcoming season and truly do believe that this is only the beginning, even though it could be the last season. This has been the next big thing. Signing off, baby. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.